Yeah. Uh, it's like when you hurt yourself mm -hmm. and if it's still open and I press it, I press it, you yeah. will be hurt. It's like that. And you can be triggered by everything that I have learned with psychology. It can be mm -hmm. even a color, a color of something can remind you and Abs trigger you. Oh, ain't that the truth. Like this notion of liberty, for example. What is liberty? And I think that concept of the will is very important. What the? Who says you can't build muscle on a vegan diet? What's it like being a, a hottie in the vegan community? <laughs> Bitcoin will not work as digital gold. Engineering, technology, these arts of humanity, they are magic. Everyone deserves the same uh, uh, chance, the same treatment, the same respect. Boom shakalaka, ladies and gentlemen, freaks and geeks, brothers and sisters around the world. You are listening or watching the Crucial Journey podcast, the most conscious podcast in the multiverse. Not, not the country, not the planet, not the universe, the entire multiverse, ladies and gentlemen. I am streaming consciousness. I talk about science, spirituality. We get beautiful, conscious girls, women, I apologize, in here, like the beautiful Lena, to talk about her journey and everything going on in this crazy world that we are immersed in. Ladies and gentlemen, before I get into this amazing interview with Helena here, my special guest for the day. I just want to get some business out of the way. First of all, you guys can find me on the Spotify's, on the iTunes, on the Telegram. You can go straight to chrisshule.com where you can find my music along with my podcast and everything else I do in this world. I do a lot of things. I'm a very talented brother. <laughs> But uh, also, you can find me on Patreon. Uh, I have a very lonely Patreon. If you guys want to support me, show your love, or just just find out all the cool things that I'm into, you can check us out there. Ladies and gentlemen, as I was saying, I got a very special guest here. I got Helena. Helena is someone that uh, actually found me, interestingly enough, on the TikToks. I've never had uh, someone that found me on the TikToks on my podcast yet, so this is a first. And she is a very conscious light. We actually met up at the Mind and Body Spirit, Mind, Body and Spirit Festival just a few weeks ago, where uh, I'm so glad she invited me because I got to meet so many conscious people. And we had this awesome conversation full of conscious minds talking about everything that's going on in the world. I love moments like that. I love meeting people that have the same views as you, but not necessarily the same views, just on the same kind of wavelength. And you get like a whole bunch of people on that wavelength. Sometimes it just creates this amazing energy and we had a moment like that between you myself and a few other conscious brothers and uh yeah i, I got the opportunity to interview scott who uh, you would have hopefully if you checked out my podcast you would have enjoyed the episode of and of course i wanted to have helena on here helena you are a very conscious lass you were someone that has had a lot of rich experiences to be honest i feel like i don't know that much about you what i do know i love but i thought this would be a great opportunity for you to delve into your journey because I know it's had a lot of ups and downs as all great stories have had and you're someone that really is living in this uh, in the in the world you know you are in the world but not of it and that's a beautiful way of expressing someone that is walking the path that is trying to bring about an efflorescence of consciousness and strive to do the the great work as they say so ladies and gentlemen uh, I'm introducing Helena do you want to tell us a bit about yourself yeah, who you are no. Your thank purpose, you, your passion. Thank you so much for welcoming me here. So as you can notice, I'm from France, so this is for like, my accent. But thank you for the introduction. And I'm so glad to be here. I'm so grateful to connect and to be on that podcast. This is amazing. I did this, this is a part of the journey and I love it. So I'm going to start like how to start. <laughs> like I did a video yesterday about it on TikTok, but... I was grateful for all the things happen in my life. I wanted to be grateful because today it's my birthday. But you know, it's like a new, a new day every day. You can create your reality, and you can create like it's it's the first time you arrive in this planet, and you can choose every day you who you want to be. And this is what I understand here in Australia. So I'm very grateful for this journey on in in Australia. But I think the journey starts uh, when I was 17 years old. 
So um, I think I, I started to be aware about um, my anxiety. I had a lot of PTSD, anxiety. And I didn't know why. I, I mean, I was not uh, aware. I was in denial. <laughs> so I just start to ask. You were, you were where? You were in, in denial? Um, I, I just I was trying to make a, a joke. About your, I love your no, I, I love not, your accent. You were in denial. Not aware. <laughs> You're oh not aware. God, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hear you. I, don't you love her accent, ladies and gentlemen? That's no, one of the coolest things about like her. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm sorry. I should let you go on. I just every yeah, every time you say something that I don't fully understand, the I have woman. to. <laughs> the woman can't express. They're always the man. No. I'm mansplaining. That's right. I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you go on with your journey. <laughs> so you were in denial. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I uh, and I just start to ask. And when you ask uh, your subconscious, so you you have the answer. So this is crazy. So you have to be very careful because the mind will show you uh, why. It's for that you have to ask the right question. And I'm going to talk about it. I love um, the sentence in the Bible: "Ask and you will receive; seek and you will find; and knock and the door open." So. I will explain later, <laughs> but I, I start with asking and I was like crazy, like going crazy, especially when I was 20 because I was in a um, toxic relationship and I wanted to get out of here. So I start to ask why um, uh, my body hurts, what I'm feeling anxious, why, 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 why me? <laughs> so the life show me why and I start to have the answer. So. At this time, I was really into meditation, hypnosis, um, neuroscience that helped me to manage that anxiety, but only in the surface, okay. uh, not deep inside, uh, because at this time I couldn't offer myself like to go to the psychologist and do the healing process. Okay, not to not to stop the flow, but I just want to get a better understanding of your situation. So. You had gone through something very traumatic, and it wasn't just affecting you here within the head, but like this was manifesting as physical problems yeah, as well. Yeah. So how how was this affecting you? Like in your ability to like you were very anxious. Was there anything else that was going on here? Uh, so I had problem like uh, with sexuality. Like I, I just that's I've such a big thing. Like what what does it mean? I'll I'll, I'll let I mean, you uh, delve into whole, like, sexuality. Like I mean. <laughs> I love that word. It I, can mean I, so many things. Like, I, I wasn't just, sure who I was as okay, a woman. This is very deep, but this, I, I really believe like <laughs> to heal yourself, you meet like mirror in life. Okay. And for me, it was men. So how I just meet men want to rush and to have sex. But at this time, like it's like there was something blocking, not just for me, but from the men. But I was okay. taking that personally. Oh, it's my fault. Well, what's happening? Blah, blah, blah. I couldn't understand. Mm -hmm. Until I had to start my memory from my childhood come back. I think it was three years ago uh, because I was asking because I was reading book about feminine energy. I start to manifest with the power of breathing and with the power of this sexual energy, but different energy, you know, like uh, like you have baby, you can manifest with your sexual energy and you don't have to have a sexual act. Mm -hmm. So I did some exercise, I did some breathing, but as well, you need to do the healing part. Mm -hmm. And uh, my brain showed me what happened in my childhood. So I started to see this flashback and I've been sexual abused when I was, when I was a child. So it started in my nearly age, but I couldn't have the proof at this time because my family don't talk. And so after my mom, she started to talk about it. And I start to have intuition when I just meditate. I start to have like memories and I ask my mom and she said, yeah, yeah, that's happened. This is true. So I start to understand, yeah, it was happening. Because when you start to remember, it's like it's a dream, you know, you're not like, mm -hmm. oh, no, 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 I'm dreaming. I'm creating that. And until the moment I had the money to offer an eye movement therapy, OMDR. Is it eye movement therapy? Yeah. Is um, that is that actually a thing? It's yeah. not your accent. It's no, called no. eye eye movement no, therapy. No, it's uh, MDR, but oh my god, how to, how to <laughs> yeah, it's eye movement therapy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can you can check, and my psychologist tell me, oh, do you have 
um, sensation in your body and yeah I had sensation between my legs <laughs> when okay. we do the, um, the eye movement therapy so basically it's like you do the gymnastic of your eyes okay and that reconnect the right brain and the left brain that's interesting because so these are th these are exercises dealing with focus where you move your yeah. eye like they so you, you can do your, with yeah. the finger or you can do with the little like <laughs> machine or something okay and you close your eyes and that uh, the the walk or you do this exercise and yeah mm. it's interesting that there is a physical connection between I mean, it's, it's not surprising between the, the mind, you know, the, by doing physical or eye movement, it can address the, the left and right hemispheres of the brain mm. and address other mental disorders. A lot of people don't often connect the physical side of things to connecting to spiritual things, but obviously there is a strong connection there. Mm. So by doing it, was it more than just uh, eye movements that you were doing with this therapy? Uh, therapy? I mean, it was uh, so a little bit talking, but not too mm -hmm. much talking. It it's not like psychiatrists you don't talk about the the trauma or you get you get you get stuck you know mm -hmm. uh, it's more reconnect to the body and calm calm the mind that helped me a lot um yeah and recently i did with a friend like she do uh, on me and that's that's helped a lot wow. uh, as well but i think this technique is linked to other technique like eft what's eft uh it's a movement as well therapy like you use tapping tapping therapy. oh tapping i've heard of that yeah, yeah a lot yeah. of people <laughs> as a way of uh, calming themselves and dealing with a whole bunch of things anxiety yeah. and, and you repeat you know i'm confident i love myself <laughs> but yeah yeah different things help me on my journey and especially the breath work i discovered last year in australia so this is the the biggest thing I think with eye movement therapy is the breath work I discovered uh, last year when I arrived in Australia. I was just scrolling on TikTok and I put the intention uh, I want to do breath work. And the first br so first TikTok I saw is um, a TikTok from Believe in Your Breath. Uh, so I did my first session with Bo. Hello, Bo. <laughs> and he became my mentor uh, with his wife, Kirsty. And yeah, it was just amazing how I can heal myself with only breathing. Like I was like, okay, mm. this is a thing. And that's what you can manifest with yeah. the breathing. Well, breathing is everything. I mean, yeah. it's something that we cannot exist without. Mm. So it's funny, I, not even that long ago, I used to think like, what is this breath work you're talking about? Because <laughs> I ended, the guy, last guy I interviewed, Scotty, shout out to Scott, uh, is, a, is a breath work coach. And I'm like, what, well, simply breathing is going to help deal with all these problems and shape, reshape people's lives. But the, the real issue is the people don't breathe correctly. They don't breathe deeply enough. They don't uh, really tap into the power of their breaths. Mm. And yeah, there's a lot of power in sometimes the most innocuous things. That means like not really overbearing very, you know, but I like to, I like to use big words. But uh, it's, it's amazing how powerful something like that can be in the eye movement therapy, how that changed you. I wanted to ask, because you mentioned that you only became aware of this issue that was from the past, that you had some trauma that happened in your life um, after, uh, after getting some kind of intuition. Am I on the right track? Mm, yeah. 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 yeah it's, it, it's, do you, what are your thoughts on what happened there? It's interesting that you only just remember that after so many, I'm guessing it was a long, it happened well before you were 17, 20, right? Yeah, yeah, my, the but trauma. Yeah, but yeah, the, the so repression, it's, so uh, it's interesting the, how that comes into effect. I've learned the trauma start when I was one year old. So, yeah, when I was a baby. So this is, this is crazy. You can remember when you were one year old? I mean, I remember I was separated from my mother and, okay. my, and my father for one year, uh, for nine months. But I didn't know why. It's like what, in, in the womb or like what? It's I was in a <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, in a nur nanny, like a nanny. I used to go to a nanny, so I, I explained a little bit. So I used to go to a nanny because my real father stole money from my mother, and she had to work at night. So I, ha I had to go to this nanny, and one day I said to this nanny, "Oh." My mom hurt me between my legs. Apparently, I one year old. I told that so. This is the story. How so, old were you when you told this? One year, one. 
Okay. So just like a baby language, like I think it's earth between my legs. But at the same time, I have this wow. intuition when I've been to my father's house, they were my grandmother and they still criticize my mother and say, oh, she don't love you. And they want you to have me, you know, to keep me. So I, will, I think it's a story that they tell me it was my mom, but in real life, I feel it's my dad because he did until I was 18. So I had a father, he manipulated me. He was into addiction. Uh, alcohol, gambling, everything. It's like I was the only one aware. But the thing is, when you have a child, you know, it's very easy to control this child, especially um, uh, zero to seven years. Uh, we are in the very subconscious in. mind. That's right. So there is no conscious consciousness. Mm. So they, they call it the formative use for a reason. I mean, there's a, there's a phrase by the Jesuit priest, you know, Give me the man, give me the child until he's six and I'll give you the man. And the mm. idea is that within these early years, this is where you have the biggest influence mm. on a child. Who you are at those years will manifest itself into the rest mm. of your life. So it's so important what happens to yeah. you at those young ages. Yeah. And, you know, when I when I observe my, my life when I was 20s and until I think 24, um, yeah, it's a reflection uh, mirror from my childhood because at this age mm -hmm. what my mm -hmm. father showed me is you know alcohol sexuality and things that I was not supposed to see uh, what, what do you mean so so your dad like he was showing what he was showing you alcohol like is, was he going about doing things like that in his life in terms of drinking or like was he giving you alcohol at a young oh, age no no no, no. it was, was like uh, when I was with him he yeah was you were drinking. seeing that was I was drinking and used to talk with me and criticize me and sexualize my body and touch my body and yeah abuse on me and he always repeat this sentence don't tell your mother i will tell her and oh, wow. this is how my awakening start when i was 70 years old uh half the mother of my ex just died of a cancer so he pretend to have a cancer, he just lie down, create this scene. And I start at this time to go out, to have fun, you know. And he, he said to me, yeah, I have a cancer, please love me, you know. He was uh, looking for that, this affection. And he said, yeah, don't tell your mother, I will tell her. So this is the sentence that uh, helped me to wake. Because at this time I was walking with my mom and I couldn't say everything, but... One day I just start to cry because I have to fight with my mother and I told her and after she called my my father and he said, no, no, it's not true. I don't have a cancer. So he lied to me and this is how it starts because he starts to say, oh, I can't trust you. Um, and at the end, it was a phone call and he told me, yeah, you're not my daughter anymore. You are a slut. Oh, God. So, yeah. <laughs> So That's yeah, sad. it was the first rejection in my life. I mean, there was some rejection because it was not really here, you know, so I was, yeah, yeah I think in my journey, I, I had the experience of different, um, different, uh, I don't know how to explain, <laughs> but I had the rejection, the humiliation. Um, yeah, yeah, and to, to think this happened in your formative years, like when most people speak about trauma, I, I'm inclined to think that, that talking about things that happened, uh, you know, when they were at least aware, like most people, I, I would think, don't remember any anything past three or four years old, you know, like mm. people find it, I, I can remember when I was two years old, you know, people find that impressive, you know, mm. you have memories of when you were one. Yeah, yeah. And to, to take that memory um, into your, your adult life, something that was as well as as difficult as that 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 surely must have been an incredible challenge you know yeah so. it's, a, it's a challenging because i had to go through this healing experience because it's like i don't have choice i have to go through that i have to heal i don't want to repeat because i believe in trauma generational trauma when i observe my family and now i start to be aware why he did that it was not yeah. himself i mean it was on alcohol, etc. Like you can be conscious, and I don't. I didn't want to repeat. Even mm -hmm. if I, there is some um, 
people they have the desire you know to do something i didn't have the desire thank god <laughs> but there is some people like desire desire <laughs> yeah. yeah you, you okay, say you say it so I'm much French. better than, no it sounds <laughs> better you know i just i and just love mocking you with you i love it you know desire I yeah, yeah, they understand. And so I have, <laughs> it's interesting because I had a podcast with a friend from New York okay. and he's a French man as well, but he speaks English and he helped a prisoner in Los Angeles and they were, they were um, uh, abused or like pedophile and he helped them with meditation and he's been abused. So it's like, oh my God, this man doing that <laughs> and you help people to be happy from, uh, from the jail, you know? And yeah. most of them, they've been abused. So there's something repeating. Yeah. L let's just, as my, my friend Scott always says, you know, let's just take a moment to breathe and appreciate the, the magnitude of, of life. It says yeah. something cooler than that, but I just wanted to add my own creative license there. But that, first of all, I wanted to pause and just appreciate just everything that you've said, because that's a lot to take on, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of trauma that's affected you but you also speak about generational th trauma and you one of the things i want to delve into right are one of, one of the topics i want to delve into is at what point do we take ownership of things that have happened to us like we, for instance the the prison prisoners right they have done horrible things but they've obviously gone through a horrible childhood now it would be easy for them to say hey look it's not my fault it's my horror it's my mm. my childhood or you know, I don't want to sound dark, you know, I want to, uh, with, with this, but like your, your dad, you know, God forbid, like I, uh, assuming, I mean, all this stuff has happened, right? And he's had, I don't know if you know too much about your dad's childhood, but I, I would assume maybe he's gone through some difficulties as well. He's dealt yeah. with some traumas. At what point does it become your responsibility? And I love your attitude that you've, you've taken upon yourself to deal with the traumas that you've gone through so they don't affect you or, you know, or affect your your family if you have you know have a family in the future, and this is an important point for me because a lot of people I feel don't want to accept the idea that they, where is they're not responsible for the things that have happened to them, they are responsible not to repeat those things to mm -hmm. other people. You know, like I could easily say that you know my brothers and sisters we suffered long out of the white man's regime. You know, and because of that I'm fucked up, yo. The white man fucked my ancestors up. You know how those mm. African Americans are talking about. <laughs> you know, it's because of the all the horrible things that happened many hundreds of years ago. And I want my reparations. Well, that happened to your ancestors, but at what point do you say, hey, look, I am not the product of what has happened mm. in my ancestry? How do you feel about that? I don't know because I always, even if that happened and some challenge happened, I always trust and believe in love and what's happened don't going to define my destiny and I can create my reality. And I understand that thanks to um, the people I follow, my mentor, people inspire me. And yeah, I just believe I, I can have the life I want and the life I deserve. So it's my responsibility to heal and when you heal yourself you will be surprised people heal around you and that doesn't mean uh, if my dad heal i will accept him in my life but i have the example with my mother with some friend at first they didn't understand why you know they they thought i was crazy you know i was like just you know go deep in my trauma and i was feeling like very sad depressed this is challenging yeah. you know but more you heal, more the people match your energy, we stay connect. So um, you just, I don't know. Did, did you have to deal with a, a lot of uh, people doubting what you were saying? Because it, it's one thing remembering something that happened a few years ago, but you were speaking about things that happened, you know, when you were one year, yeah, one yeah. year old. Did you have family, friends that were, were, were just assuming that you were perhaps hallucinating these things like mm. how did how did that affect you uh no 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 i think they they, they were shocked as well mm. my mom especially was shocked of course mm. she was feeling guilty because so, you you know you let your child so no so just specifically in regards to like you know how you're speaking about what happened to you when you were one year old i mean when you was it just your mom that you told about that i oh, know i didn't i didn't tell my mom i mean mm -hmm. so um, my my mom she was just 
have to go to a jail, I think, for nine months. Uh, but we wait, did, wait, wait, we wait, never wait, I missed that. What do you mean? My mom. Yeah, she had to go to jail. Yeah. She had to go to jail for why? How? Because they were they they thought that she touched me like she oh, was on me. Oh, I see. So <laughs> your mom took the responsibility of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it was you think it was your your, your dad. Yeah, because yeah, but you. That I never talked with my mom. I couldn't. He programmed me to not talk. So I never talked until I oh, was that's, twenty four. That's or all 23. kinds of uh, fucked up. Yeah, that's so. So at this point in time, when your mom's going to jail, you're 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 with your dad. No, I'm yeah. with with my nanny. With your nanny, okay. And uh, your your nanny, they they did they think that your mom was was the one that was responsible for yeah for yeah. all of that. And uh, the whole time you you th you th you knew it to be your dad. Um, I, I feel something inside, but the feeling start when I was 17, I, I started to be aware, I started to see how he act, how mm. he talk before I was like, you know, when a trauma happened, there is the fight and flight mode sure. or the freeze. I was more in the freeze. Like I couldn't talk one day. I remember this is my biggest trauma. Mm. Um, like we just been to a party in the village. He was very drunk. And we just go home and he starts to criticize me, to put me down. And it was very sad because I just um, I lost my brother. One of my brother died. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I, I didn't yeah. even, I'm, I'm not sure. If, I don't think you told me that. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> so it was a long time that's, ago, uh, but it that's was incredibly like, difficult. Uh, this time, nobody talked about that. Um, you know, I couldn't go to, um, we, to you his two funeral. Were you two were close? Uh, not so much because so much. at this time my brother do didn't want to see me because of my father. So this is where tricky uh, as well. Family situations yeah, are so my, difficult. My family, you know? like this part yeah. of this family. Yeah. So during this trauma, I remember my my father very like cry, sad, and just uh, to rescue him, you know, to calm him. He asked me to do something, you know, and mm -hmm. this is. I remember the abuse and then at this moment I just remember I called my mom the next day my mom and my stepfather come and I asked my mom do you remember this time uh, what happened what I tell you and she said oh you didn't tell me like nothing you say oh no no nothing happened but a lot of things happened this night yeah I couldn't express so yeah it, it was a lot like you know I was just don't express myself for 24 years. <laughs> mm. So it was, yeah. Yeah, that is, um, that is an incredible journey. Uh, difficult thing to say the least, to have to, to burden. And, you know, I, I think back on just some of the things that I've dealt with that I think are resolved, but they're still laying in my subconscious. Like, it made me realize how many things that you've, you've dealt with in the past, in mm -hmm. your youth, that are still manifesting as um, as trauma in this day and age, you know? Because mm -hmm. sometimes, I think for most of us, it's really difficult for us to know why we're upset because the, the conscious mind is only intermittently in contact with the subconscious. And we typically manifest what is going on with this, within our subconscious. So that means we don't know why we're pissed off, why, why we're agitated, but we are. So sometimes people are like, why am I so angry? Why am I so frustrated right mm -hmm. now? Why do I feel so hurt? And you have to go back deeper than the surface argument that may have erupted that has pissed you up it, it's actually touched on a nerve touched on something that happened to you when you were a little child and perhaps someone neglected you i i had a close friend that would would tell me about how he was we were we were speaking about the most traumatic moments that had affected our life and he was he spoke about something that seemed so innocuous it was something as simple as um his dad making fun of him you know like he basically uh like he'd uh he, you know, this is this is a child mind. You like a little kid. I think he'd um he you know done like he'd done a poo or, or something like that and, you know, on his nappies, and I think his dad was really upset or something like that. But something as innocuous as that, because of the way that it made him feel, that had left some form of like uh, feeling of apprehension, rejection that was still mm -hmm. manifesting in this adult life that he was yeah. living now. So it, it's just. It's crazy just how trauma can manifest itself and how important it is to yeah. address that. Because I've learned, like, you know, the, the trauma is not the event, it's the, like, the, um, the hole, like, you have. 
uh, and you mm. carry on. Yeah. Uh, it's like when you hurt yourself mm -hmm. and if it's still open and I press it, I press it, you yeah. will be hurt. And it's like that. And you can be triggered by everything that like I've learned with psychology. It can be mm -hmm. even a color, a color of something can remind you and Abs trigger you. Oh, ain't that the truth, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's why, where is I think that it's important to learn to deal with the difficult situations to become stronger? I mean, there's this constant, there's this idea of uh, paradio ad astra. That's one of my favorite Latin phrases. I love dropping wisdomatic uh, phrases like that. It means through hardship to the stars. And by going through difficult things, you become stronger. Mm. It's kind of like snake venom. You, you develop an immunity when you are given the, ve the venom, right? You develop the antibodies and so forth. However, the other side of it is to, because the reality is there are certain events that we we're not able to deal with mm. that are actually going to be detrimental to us. The other thing is to surround yourself with the kind of environment that can nurture you to help you to grow rather than being around things that are triggering you all the time, create an environment that is inspiring. Yeah. I mean, the first thing you should make sure of um, before you diagnose yourself with depression is that you're not surrounded by assholes, right? Mm. So you want to make sure that you have good friends that enrich in your life that aren't um, yeah. trying to, to bring you down and so forth. But I think it's important to have both of those approaches because you need to be strong in order to get stronger, but you also need to have the right environment in order to allow you to mm. grow. Yeah, this is what I, I did. I think when I was during the lockdown in 2020, mm -hmm. um, there's my intuition told me, okay, go back to meditation. So I did the, the meditation. And a few hours later, there's a friend, she told me about permaculture. So I don't know if you know about oh, like yeah. sustainable life, Absolutely. community. This is the Crucial Journey podcast. <laughs> like that's one of the first things I delved into on this podcast. I love that world. And yeah. she just said, oh, check that. And then I check this course and you're going to love it. And she was right. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I just jump in and I say to myself, oh my God, I have to find a place uh, where to do permaculture. I can't. I'm in apartments. I will, I'm with my ex. I don't like this life. <laughs> okay, yeah. show me. And so I discovered this community in Nice. It okay. was like oh, five, this is in France. Yeah, yeah. All right. In France. Five minutes from the, from the center of Nice. So it's like you go to paradise, like you go to this garden and you meet these people, live in community, want to help you. And I start to to find my family, you know, <laughs> to create my family. I've been mm -hmm. there, there was like these spiritual people, more older than me. And we just start to to do energy. I remember the first time I was doing um, like a permaculture workshop and during the break, there is a friend, she started to do Reiki on me and I start to feel I was a eyes closed and I start to feel I say what you're doing on me <laughs> what's that I can feel that oh I can feel that and I start to laugh we laugh and I was oh my god I want to learn that so um, I start for two years to be involved in that community more than two years and even do event about meditation coaching and I know it was like my safe place because when I when I was in Nice, in the city, I was not feeling good, but every weekend I used to go to this community and that helped me to heal. And since then, I'm into this sustainable life. I even live in a community for one month in Italy, uh, in a sacred place um, in the south of Italy. And I start to live in community and this was the amazing experience. Like, you know, you, you just meditate in nature, in a cave with your spiritual soul, you just heal with the group so i really believe in that for that i love to do group coaching group work breath work everything in a group i think it's so helpful to be to be supported by other oh that is powerful so th when, when you started getting into permaculture that's when you started meeting more conscious people yeah into reiki yeah i often love uh how things like that are so interne interconnected for instance you go to a yoga studio and you'll find people that are interested in sustainable living they're interested in health and like there are all these connections of positivity that uh that come out of that one thing so it's always good to have a uh, a group of um of, of people that are interested in something powerful like that you know because it was very similar to me like i whereas i've always been interested in a lot of these things like the esoteric side of a uh, of, of knowledge, uh, you know, hidden knowledge and basically understanding how to grow in all areas of life, you know, from mm. science, spirituality, technology and whatnot. But it wasn't until I, I met uh, 
probably people that were part of a movement called the Zeitgeist Movement, which is all about sustainability, essentially trying to create a society where uh, you are using the resources and technology in order to make a more beneficent planet, right? And these people were very much interested in technology, society, and I met uh, a group of guys that put me in contact with other people that were in, and this is actually when I got into uh, permacul um, permaculture. I'm pretty sure that's that's what it was like. Just to just to confirm, like permaculture is where you're you're growing things uh, uh, sustainably, right? You're yeah. using technologies to essentially create mm. uh, healthy healthy food. Yeah, first you you create your design and you observe. So I love it because it's like you can do in your own life with yourself. You design your life. That that I love it. And after you do your garden, so first you meditate on it. You see like. Uh, they, the wind, uh, the weather, like everything, and then you start to do it. So it's a lot of kind of introspection, like you design your life, you design your own garden, <laughs> and then you take action. Yeah, I got blown away with the technological side of things, like how sustainable it was to create an entire ecosystem, uh, an entire farmland with a limited amount of resources. And a lot of people have this idea that there are too many, for instance, there are too many people on the planet and we need to have, like, it's too difficult to create, a, a, for instance, a, 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 a society, you know, that has enough food and so forth. But then you realize there are all of these technologies that can essentially pull water from the air, that can grow, like you have uh, aquaponics and you, you have a... Uh, you, you have all kinds of technologies where you, you are maximizing the yield of foods you are you're, it, it's like watching a science fiction movie, mm. right? And then it opens your mind to the reality, which is something that I find within all of these um, these realms, you know, whether it's permaculture or uh, esoteric technologies and whatnot, that there are so many ways of benefiting society that just don't come out into the mainstream. And it's almost as if um, there is an agenda. In fact, I'd say there is in order to prevent a lot of these uh, alternative uh, um, sustainable technology has been coming onto the market and so forth. I mean, ob mm -hmm. the obvious reason is is money, power. You know, it, it makes a lot more sense to to have people relying on on coal or or non sustainable technology technologies because you can make more money as opposed to being able to just pull energy from the ether. And uh, it's 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 a beautiful realization when you you come to the understanding that there are so many ways in order to benefit the planet and your mm. life they are out there it's just a matter of beginning with the first step you know just having the the will to actually learn about it yeah and i think people need to be aware when you understand why you're doing something you start to doing more you know i think people are not aware we're like so conditioned like in the in this program so but now there's people even with a lot of money like people I follow like my favorite actor they are doing film about it about sustainable Who's your life. favorite actor? Jan Samuelder. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do I The way that you said that you even blushed as you said this. This must be some like uh swashbuckling good looking uh guy. Who, is he a f French ac actor? No, no, no. Uh, he's from Vampire Diaries. Vampire. Oh, wait a sec. I not think yeah, the really I Damon. You know. Yeah, he's the black he's the black haired guy, right? <laughs> Yeah, I you know, a, I, a story about it. Okay. I got a man crushing him too. You, you tell me your story first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I no. really. You can you can watch the movie Kiss the Ground, and okay. there is another movie doing with other actors. So it's not the only one. Become aware about it. Mm -hmm. But actually, I love this actor because I meet him meet him in the Cannes Festival when wow. I was eighteen. So this is the first time I manifest something. I'm into law of attraction as well. All right. So and I, I was not aware, and I, it just come to me, talk to me, and say I love you, and kiss my hand. Yeah, I remember. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> he approached you like the the smooth brother he was. He is, yeah. and just uh, like I, I didn't have my phone. My phone was broke by a day. So. Well, how did this happen? He just approached you out of nowhere and was like, "Kiss no. your hand." Like, okay, I, I, I tell you? the whole story. All right. There was a presenter from France. Okay. And he he, he come to me and asked me. Do you love Jan Somerhalder? <laughs> of course, I say yes. I'm in love with him. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Ba back up. There was a prison... Prison turtle, like a... Prison turtle? Like a... <laughs> Is that what oh I heard? God. I was like, did I hear you say that right? I'm sorry, the accent. I love it, but sometimes... <laughs> I, I hear it more in English. <laughs> yeah, so... so the man from the TV, you know, they... 
present the show. A presenter. Okay, like a talk show presenter. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you come to me and you say, "Do you are, are you in love with uh, with uh, Damon?" Yeah. <laughs> and I say, "Yes, I'm in love awesome. with him." Yeah. So I don't know if it's see, you see yeah, the yeah. video or sure, it's just sure, sure. come straight. I yeah, don't yeah. know why. I was like, oh my God, what's yeah, happening? And, yeah. I, <laughs> and then I he approaches something you. something silly. <laughs> I saw to uh, take his hand and his manager, uh, you know, say that, do that. But he turned and he take my hand, he kissed my hand and he said, I love you. Oh, he was saying I love you to all uh, the group people. <laughs> and it was the first time I was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh man, see, the power of celebrity. I, I love stuff like that. So, yeah, and I didn't know why I... <laughs> I, I feel, of course, he's good looking, but I don't know why I like him uh, oh, as an actor. You like him because he was good looking. It's like, <laughs> he's so no. so amazing, so spiritual. But he's like, he's just hot. Like, you can no, say it. It's like not he doing, <laughs> not he doing movie about. I mean, it, it helps. It, it, and no he doubt, it helps. Song. Yeah. He had the dream life with Nikki Red. I want the same thing, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, he had this farm, big land. He doing permaculture. He doing movie. This is so cool. I want to do the same thing. It is very thing. cool. I love Leonardo DiCaprio for the same reason. You know, like it's cool when you look up to an artist, someone that you admire because you love what they do. But then you find out that they're into all this other cool stuff, and it's it's powerful. Like I, I often used to think that the best way to bring about like positive change in the world was to be all kind of like I want to you know go out get into politics, get into activism and so forth. But the, the truth is, the power of celebrity is, is, is intoxicating. When you're extremely influential by just being good at doing something, you'll find that people will be interested in you for doing that thing. And then they will tend to, uh, more, they'll be more inclined to like things that you do regardless, you know. So if you happen to be someone that, like yourself, you know, that is interested in spirituality and so forth, where is your you're an actress or something like that, or you're a public speaker, you know, <laughs> people will obviously be drawn to you because you're a great public speaker, but mm -hmm. they'll be like, oh my God, you know, you're, you're into this stuff as well. I want to, I'm going to be into that because you're into that, you know, mm -hmm. like it has a lot more sway when someone of influence is into something than when someone that does not have any influences. That's why we, we always, uh, we're always influenced by the power of celebrity. So yeah. I, I realize anyway that one of the biggest ways to influence people is to be successful at what you love doing. And then through that, you have more influence, more reach. Yeah, but you don't have to be a celebrity. There's a lot oh, of people inspiring me. Not, not necessarily. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that, I'm sure. But let's be honest. I, it, it had like, what's his name again? Yansa Moraldo. Yeah, Yansa Moraldo. It had a lot more sway, Yansa Moraldo, being into <laughs> permaculture than, let's say, some person you didn't know. It's like, oh, Yansa Moraldo's into permaculture. I'm going to have to get into it now with more, more passion, right? Because it's like, <laughs> Maybe. yeah, it's just, you know what I'm saying. I mean, yeah, it's just because I, I, I've experienced that as well, you know, on, on both sides of the spectrum. You know, I've had people that have found me through my music and then they found out that I'm into all this activism, you know, I'm into sustainability, you know, plant-based lifestyle, all that kind of stuff. And they have been inclined to look into that because they like my music, you know. So it's, it's just something that I think is really beautiful, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But that's, that's a cool story. See if uh, anyone can pull out that video of um, Jan Smeraldo, you know, uh, hitting on <laughs> you. You can put the image. Yeah, I'll see if I can get that in there. Wow. So you have traveled all the way from the beautiful land of France. Yeah. to australia mate yeah so what what made you take on that that crazy journey oh why australia <laughs> is, it, is it something about this australian bogans that you like you like oh yeah yeah no yeah mate yeah, Where mate. You, going? <laughs> <laughs> you love the australian accent so much now what was um, it what brought you here so i think it's the universe because i was not supposed to be here uh but so three years ago no two years ago i was in malta i was a tour guide mm -hmm. and i was struggling with a PTSD, remember all my trauma. And uh, I met this guy in a bar, a bachata bar, and he just talked to me about my tattoo. Actually, I have a big dragon, and I have a problem with the um, uh, root chakra. There is a problem with the red ink. And yeah, this is, there is a can, meaning. Can you show it? It's very cool. It's very cool. Like, can you, you just, just stand up? <laughs> just get back up to that. It's very, oh, yeah, one of the cool. Oh, yeah, don't, 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 I'm not going to get you to get you to take your, but I you can. Can't. Uh, you can just put, show, show us one, like, one, if you put it up there. Just put, just put one like there. It is. Can we, yeah, it it's. Is, you see, maybe you see there's a problem. With see the if I can red. zoom in on that. If you're into uh, the seven chakra, you maybe understand the meaning of yeah. what I told my story about. All right. So, he talked to me 
and you become my friend and you had a lot of PTSD as well. Mm -hmm. So it was a trauma bond. <laughs> he told me that, I think. <laughs> like we become friends and it was the first man become really my friend. You know, most of the time I attract like, people who want to rush into sexuality. Well, I mean, that's like guys pretty much. <laughs> yeah, guys. <laughs> Sometimes but girls, I don't know. Yeah, I shouldn't. Yeah, it's another, it's another subject. So whatever, and it just become my friend. I think in few weeks, it was my idea. We did a matching tattoo. So you are the best. You both got matching tattoos. Yeah. How long have you known each other? <laughs> Three weeks. Oh wow! You see, I love that kind of spontaneity. You, know? <laughs> you see, crazy. they're my favorite people. I mean, people. You see, well, I I think you call that a trauma bond, right? Yeah. yeah. But. I mean, I don't have trauma bonds. I wouldn't call myself a trauma bonder, right? But I am the kind of personality where I I am non-suppressive. Like, when I meet someone, right, I just want to be kind of like, oh, like, bro, no, bro, let's, let's freaking just go. Let's travel to travel to Sydney, just like that. You know, people that are very spontaneous, mm. they think before they, they act, they act before they think, right? Mm. And they, they're very... They're they're like they're like my people. They're Aquarians. They are the they often diagnosed as having uh, some issue, but they're the most. The, I I think the the French word sums it up. You know the joie de vivre. I'm not sure if I pronounced that properly. I butchered that, right? What's but that? But so some guy said that I had that one time. And I was like, it sounded so cool. I looked it up, and apparently it means passion for life. Uh. Joie de vivre. I'm I'm butchering it. I'm sure. <laughs> but those people are the people that you have to like you, you got to take them by the hand and just run through life with because mm. it makes life all the more joyous oh yeah, yeah this 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 man is like a soulmate you know but as a okay. friend and it just i remember i was in a, in a bench in malta i was crying for another man want to rush on me into sexuality so oh let, just... let me guess it's like this <laughs> this guy sees you right crying on the stage like what a beautiful girl like you do in the island love. <laughs> my, my boyfriend doesn't appreciate me. He doesn't like me. <laughs> and he's like, oh, really? I will take good care of you, girl. Why don't you come back to my house right now? No. I'll take good care of you. No, I don't tell her. You say, look at me in the eyes. <laughs> you say, Elena, so, I'm going to be there for you until you find a man respect you and love you for who you are. That's and what he was did. saying. But uh, he, you, you went into, obviously, you two dated. And, uh, no, we're no, not dating. You, you, you... I was not dating him. Really? So it was just... Yeah, I know it's surprising every, every man I met. Oh, no, but... No, 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 this man... Just when I hear a story about a guy like that, you know, it's like, it's it's classic. I I, I just I just want to help you find your spiritual place. You know, I, I want to make you a better person. But they're no, like... Obviously, the guy nothing liked you. Nothing happened. Yeah, he liked me. He lo it's a unconditional love. Yeah, yeah. But nothing happened. Nothing, nothing happened. happened. All right, okay. well, yeah. And now you had a girlfriend. I'm so happy for him. Like, they're, they're coming to my birthday today or whatever. Okay. So oh, that's so right. I, I need to say this again. Happy birthday. Oh, we got yeah. your special. You're doing my podcast on your birthday. Wow. I, I, feel, wow. I feel honored. All right. So <laughs> the story is uh, we keep in touch for one year. I've been back to Nice and I was a tour guide and um, I was working with this company and they sent me to do um, like tour guide thing. Uh, tour in yeah, a, so you're in a tour, village. Tour guy. In a village, sure. I used to go to see my father and where I was abused. Oh, so wow. I was in the train, shaking every day and keep my anxiety, you know. And I have to pretend, oh, this is so cool to be a tour guy here. Mm -hmm. And I used to cry every night after. But oh. this is not the big thing. It's the things people recognize me. And they say, oh, you're the daughter of... And I had to explain, no, 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 uh, it's not my father anymore. Be and people say... How do, how do you feel about that? Because uh, to me, this is something that strikes a, co a chord in my heart. Because like, when people use the term father, they have a very different idea about it. But like to you, you don't associate him with being a father. No, but yeah. I don't know how to call uh, him. I mean, I'm not yeah. going to say his name. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, fair, <laughs> that's fair enough. But before, it's just... I was like, uh, oh, my real father, oh... Uh, I was very more, I had anger, but now it's like, okay, this is the man put me in this world. Sure. That's it. But no, sure. I consider my father as my, he's my stepfather. Oh, so, oh, I see. So it was your actual stepfather. No, no, no. no? I have a stepfather. Yeah. Uh, he was here, um, until, uh, I was three years old until 17. Yeah. And he's still here in my life. Okay. And this is my stepfather. This is the man was here for me. He didn't hurt I see. Me. And sure. I have a real father and 
He's oh, fair enough. Was on okay, I mis see. I even misunderstood that. So, because when the situation you were talking about, when people saying that this is your father, like that was your stepfather. No, no, it's not no. my step. I mean, the, that w the person that they the were. The person abused on me is not my stepfather. It's my father. Yeah. Okay. So my that's what. My stepfather was here like a father. I, I get that. But <laughs> so I'm just trying to get clarity here. But the situation yeah. you were talking about, where some person recognized you and then mentioned ah, no, no, no no the people they were from the village okay and, and they, was they, they mentioned your father yeah w was that actually your father they were referring to yeah my they, real father i see but you denied that like saying that though that's not my father right yeah yeah was, what, uh, what was oh, the no, reason no, for that because i was so uh, much angry yeah, and I just, all right uh, i didn't go deeper with them explain what happen sure but they told me that's the thing shock me for that i want to have the child to express their truth and the address as well because they told me oh yeah it was seems like very weird uh, alcoholic okay so you see a child with an alcoholic man and you don't you do nothing yeah like, like, <laughs> this is normal but yeah. yeah yeah i i guess what i was trying to touch on is that there is this this thing i find where when something has happened to you that is very negative whether it's a it's a lover or friend or family member right we want to distance ourselves from that person therefore some people say like i've been in you know relationships where you know they've been amazing like uh, you know girl like we've been so close and then because things don't work out there the person says oh you know it was never anything serious anyway and i never had any feelings for them when they've actually written and said that look you're the most amazing person ever right but because something bad has happened they disconnect and say oh no we were never in a relationship or they say oh no that was never my brother that was no mm -hmm. you want my you want my real friend or you know you're not my father you were you know that kind mm -hmm. of thing and it's it's a scene that i i find playing particularly with relationships dealing with um with family bonds and whatnot mm -hmm. and the terms that people use to define the relationships is something that tends to change my attitude is that family like it doesn't change in term granted we all have uh physiological bonds like i have a biological brother right a biological father that passed away and so forth that doesn't change right I, I will never say that someone is like my actual brother is not my brother, you know, so that's just how I look mm -hmm. at it. But a lot of people feel this thing where because they no longer have a connection with someone, mm -hmm. they don't look at them as a father figure or a mother figure. And it's something that I think is, uh, I yeah, it, it, it causes a lot of, of problems, um, particularly when we move into this world now where these terms are so loose and people no longer honor the actual definition of these words, you know, because it, it's something that I, I've dealt with, you know, in, in regards to my, my own family. Like when my, when my father passed away, it's, it was the hardest thing I'd ever gone through. And I, I have my mom, uh, she, she remarried. They, my, bro, my mom and my dad um, weren't together for a long time, and she remarried someone who effectively is my stepdad. And I would see them not that often, you know, I grew up with my dad, but people would say things like, oh, that is that, like people, there would be this confusion now because in some people's minds, like my father was, that they had a very different idea of what father means. In my mind, my father has always been my biological father, you know, mm -hmm. but from a Ghanaian context, some people look at my, my stepdad, right, and say, oh, wait a sec, he's, he's your dad right now. And just the way that I look at things, like it doesn't change. Like my, my biological, like the the connections that I have towards someone in terms of like family, that doesn't change. I mean, at least within the objective sense of mother, father. Mm -hmm. And it's just something I've also noticed people doing when they're no longer happy with a, a family member. They're like, oh, you know, my, you know, my mother, you know, my brother anymore, that kind of thing. I don't play that game, mm -hmm. but I, I just realized that a lot of people have a different idea as to how they, define these terms and it's just something i wanted to get your thoughts on yeah i think every case is different you mm -hmm. know we are all in in our journey and before i was uh, a lot of anger you yeah know? and i uh, i just deny yeah it's not my father anymore how he can do that but you yeah. know i i reconnect to god for this divine energy and i just have this intuition voice talk to me and i become more rare more rare and what's happening in in the trauma, generational trauma, why my mom act like that, why my dad act like that. And I start very weird, but to have compassion, 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 to, compassion and mm -hmm. to, to understand, you know, you become aware of oh, why it, it couldn't be aware to abuse a child. It was, no, it wasn't alcohol. It was um, always in 
uh, doing suicide, want to do suicide, want to go to, go to the hospital, but nobody talk about it. it was like there's something wrong, but we don't talk about it. Sure. And he's supposed to be, I don't know, in a hospital. He even write letter to my brother, mm-hmm. to the mother of my brother, and say, "Ah, oh, yeah, I should, I should be dead, or I should be in a hospital." And he was supposed to go to jail many times for money, but have some family manage to, um, for him to not be in jail. So you know, he just used that you know to do it and do it again and nobody stop him and it's yeah, like you know i can relate to that situation it's, it's in, very weird enabling. because i want to express now mm-hmm. not to fight but to let people aware you know i, I don't do that with anger or sure. you know i want to um, fight with him i just yeah. want to tell the truth because this is the truth that's how you Be- heal as well like do you yeah. i find it's cathartic when you can speak about that it means like yeah. it's a way of purging a lot of the negativity from you yeah um, i think a lot of the times um like there's this weird thing where i'm going on all these rants right now but let me just say this like we don't often give power to our words and sometimes the most powerful thing that you can do is speak the truth a lot of mm. times people keep things secret because it's been it's very yeah. traumatic you know but by this is one of the powerful things about therapy people say they're going to see a therapist because they have this insight into their psychology i say i don't even buy into that stuff i i don't give that much respect for most therapists but it's the fact that you're now able to speak about a lot of the issues that you have and purge these neurotic holding patterns that have built up within your body and by speaking the words by making them conscious forming them it's a way of nourishing your your soul a way of addressing this this negativity that has has been hidden in some dark recess of your subconscious mind bringing that out into the light and uh purging that like one of the powerful things you can do about speaking speaking the truth Mm. is you bring light you bring the darkness into the light and then obviously darkness cannot stand within light and as a result by speaking about your traumas you're actually addressing it. Yeah, and at the beginning it was very weird. Like, why have this intuition to just talk? And it was very like challenging because I love meditation, I love visualization, I love to connect with my higher self, and the interest into like law of attraction, neuroscience, permaculture. I saw myself like you know in this echo village and host the people have been sexual abuse to heal, and I start to see myself speak on stage. Um, in front of thousands of people and I'm like, oh my God, how oh, I'm going to do that? Yeah, it's very funny, you cannot show me something easy. And I start to, li- to listen to this boy, yeah, do a podcast and now I'm into a podcast. Yeah, like, now you're on the Crystal <laughs> Journey podcast. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, dropping your, your yeah. wisdomatic truth bombs to, I know, 10 um, viewers. We'll get, to, we'll get to a million soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's, what I'm going to talk about, oh, but sexual abuse. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, but seriously, like, thank you for sharing that because, I mean, this is this is a podcast I know a lot of people are going to want to listen to, you know, because yeah. I, I actually didn't know we'd be touching on something as as uh, as challenging as this, mm. but this is the kind of stuff that, whereas I'm, I'm sure it's difficult to talk about, yeah. it's the kind of stuff that people, I think, will gain the most from because mm. a lot of the times, one of the reasons I love listening to podcasts is I realize how connected I am in the sense that, oh, I have all these weird thoughts bubbling in my head, you know, I forget my train of thought, and because you hear other people do that in a podcast, it makes you realize, oh, you know what? People have these same kind of thoughts and the people are just like me mm. in this regard and it makes you more connected yeah. as opposed to just listening to the news which projects this very fake representation mm. of what's going on in the world. And often news presenters are like, welcome to, to National 9 News today. No one even speaks like that, you know? Whereas, yeah. I, must, I must confess, in the real life, I'm, I'm not quite as silly, but I try to you know, amp it up on the podcast. But it's, it's more realistic. Mm, yeah. And... That's why I love these kind of conversations. So you, you see yourself, what is the ideal Helena in, in the future? Like, where do you see the best version of yourself hmm. uh, some years from now doing? So when I use my technique to connect with my higher self, uh, I saw myself in nature. So there is a mountain and there's people like an eco village. And I saw myself welcome me in a white dress. And just I explore the eco village I have created to host the people who've been through trauma and need to heal. Like, and I 
I have my uh, spiritual healing center and I'm just friends. Uh, yeah, it's very ambitious with, but with the best neuroscientist, the best psychologist, the best healer to help people heal uh, quicker. Like even in one week, people can go there and just have the tools to heal themselves because I really believe in that. <laughs> and I know it's possible because I'm into energy days. A lot of people talk about it. Um, so yeah, I saw myself travel the world. I do that already. Speak on stage. I speak on stage already. Oh, wow. <laughs> Doing podcasts. I'm into a podcast. I'm so it's coming. Well, <laughs> so it's just like when's I'm your, coming. When's your next speaking engagement? You know, oh, not, not to put you on the spot, but you got you to share, share this yeah. stuff out there. I'll, I'll be the sure next to, one? Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I mean, in Australia, I'm not sure because I'm leaving soon, but I think they will be in, in France. Uh, I want to go and speak on stage and um, teach people breath work and uh, so about energy, neuroscience uh, and share all the tools I've learned here in Australia because it's not like open minded. Now we start to talk about breath work, but I want to, to share with people and help people to heal themselves. Yeah, that's powerful. Mad props for that. Uh, that means like I have so much respect for what you want to do, you know. Unlike me, there's just wants to serenade women on stage, you know, and like they sing and sing. But <laughs> now, the, the truth is, like, I, I, one of the most powerful things I think you can do is to inspire people. Mm. And inspiration takes effect in many ways. Sometimes it can be to heal, uh, or it can be to, bre essentially, it's breathing life. That's what the word inspiration means. Inspirare to breathe life mm. into someone. And I think when you're doing work where you're able to restore someone inspire them make them laugh excite them to essentially uplift their vibration that manifests itself into uh, uplifting the vibration of the planet which mm. is the in a sense it's the great work you know it's the, it's one of the best things that you can do so i have a lot of respect for what you want to do and where is you know not everyone here might be able to see your your speaking engagement in particular if you're not in australia you helena you have a podcast. Yeah, right? I have a podcast. What, what's it called? Intuitive, Intuitive Voices. Voices. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Intuitive Voices. I've created that, I mean, two years ago, uh, three years ago as well. Okay. But I thought that I want to do it in English, but I was in France. My English was not as good as now. Uh, Your English is very good. It's even <laughs> more interesting because some words I can't fully understand. I have to second guess myself. Uh, like, <laughs> deny <laughs> And oh my god it's, <laughs> it's okay it's, no i just i'm just it's, making fun it's, it's actually yeah. lovely sorry tell tell me more about your podcast okay so the intuitive voice i want to ask people to express their truth and to talk about different subjects into spirituality um, neuroscience breath work everything can help other and create a community and yeah start to co-create abundance together powerful well you know i must admit um you i think you invited me on your podcast and i was like you know she come on mine or something along those lines so uh <laughs> you know i mean this is uh this is awesome having you come on my podcast but i just really i don't think i ever really do any other ones any anyone else's podcast so uh you know before you if you, before you leave uh, Australia, if you yeah, you put can it out come there, in my podcast, you know, of course. We'll see, uh, might, <laughs> might come on the intuitive voices yeah. and drop some wisdomatic truth your bombs, voice, ladies and your gentlemen. Beautiful voice for yeah, us. might even serenade you. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't sing for me. It's my birthday. Oh, sing it's your, something. I should sing something, right? Yes. You know, I mean, I never thought I'd do this, but I'm going to pull out my guitar right now. I, uh, I'm going to sing for you. All right. I'll Actually, right this is a concept of intuitive voices. Yeah. Uh, I host people, and at the end, they they offer a practice or something to help other. So you have to find <laughs> something with your voice. <laughs> oh, you're putting me on the spot here. I don't, uh, all right, yeah, let's, let's going to sing. All right. So uh, this is manifestation. <laughs> I mean, how appropriate. I just got my guitar back from being repaired today. So uh, let's see if I can, I can bust out something special for Helena. The, uh, Beautiful Don't French goddess. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can uh, play something that I'm sure even the people in French, <laughs> French, that's like a country, <laughs> <laughs> France. Uh... All right, all right, what do we got here? Ha 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Helena. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Helena. Happy birthday. Give him! Hooray! <laughs> Happy birthday, Helene. Thank you. Mwah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ladies, <laughs> you know, you should feel very priv privileged. I've never performed a song on any of my podcasts, so uh, yeah. that, is a, that is a first for me. <laughs> wow. It's kind of corny. It's so special. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Another episode of the Crystal Journey podcast. We got... What's your full name, by the way? Do you just go by Helena? Yeah. Do you have like an alias or something? I feel like you need a... A bigger introduction or sign I mean, up. my last name? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Elena Payne. Hale Helena. Is that Helena? Helena. Helena. Oh, Elena. 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 Elena Payne. Elena. Payne. No pain, no gain. No yeah, pain, no gain. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, Elena Payne, I want to say that it has been a pleasure to do this podcast with no, you. No. Can I <laughs> teach you a sentence? Very important. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I'd love to hear it. On ne dit pas. Oh, <laughs> All right, I mean, she's teaching me mm. some French right now. Oh, this, this turns me on. <laughs> on, on ne dit pas. On ne dit pas. Chocolatine. Chocolatine. Mais. Mais. Pas au chocolat. Pas au chocolat. On ne dit pas. On ne dit pas. Chocolatine. Chocolatine. Mais pas au chocolat. Mais pas au chocolat. How, how that sound? What did I say? <laughs> What did I say? So, there is a fight in France. Between the chocolate croissant, the name. So okay, there's a <laughs> there's fight. A part of friends, they yeah. call it uh, chocolatine. Yeah. And my part of friends call it pain au chocolat. So if you go to friends, you have to say pain au chocolat. <laughs> oh, really? So you're you're on the chocolate team. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Chocolat. Good thing. Yeah, I love chocolate. <laughs> love chocolate? Well, everybody loves some chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there you okay. have it. If you go to France, be sure to ask for some <laughs> Femme Chocolat. <laughs> <laughs> Helena, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's thank been you. a pleasure. It has been it has been powerful. It has been tumultuous. It has been inspirational. And it has been a really good opportunity to gain an insight into uh, dealing with some of the difficulties, you know, that people go through in the world, which is what they, this podcast humbly is about. It's about giving people different perspectives. It's about sharing our thoughts, ideas, and allowing us to connect. So uh, once again, it is an absolute pleasure having you on here, and uh, I have no doubt that you are going to influence many people as you are on a daily basis by being so authentic and inspirational and having a beautiful smile. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you for all the space for me. I really appreciate it. Anytime. Ladies and gentlemen, you can find out more about Helena. Yeah. Uh, on you're on Instagram. Yeah. I know you're into TikToks because that's how you found me. No, you found me. <laughs> <laughs> Why you lie? No, no, no. I follow you. You follow me back. Yeah, uh, she's like, oh, you're and so you you're invite conscious. Me. You're so you spiritual. You invite me to the mind body uh, spirit. Such I a want liar. to. I want to connect <laughs> with you. <laughs> and uh, you're you're all over the internet. Obviously, you got a podcast, so yeah. uh, people can hit you up there. I will put the details, yeah, the links the down links. below. And ladies and gentlemen, be sure to wish uh, this beautiful lass a happy birthday. Uh, send her some love. Reach out to her, as I'm sure you will. And remember, there are three things that cannot remain hidden for long, as I always like to say. The sun, the moon, and the beautiful palm chocolat smile of the chocolate music, <laughs> and this beautiful lass over here. <laughs> All right. Peace, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> signing out. The Chris Shield Journey. Ow! Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, say, wait, bye-bye. Au Give revoir. Yeah, all your so give me a abonnez-vous à ce podcast. Give me give me a French kiss goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>